What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of High Mythology, the show where we get higher than the Slavic peasant that came up with the, the name of uh, today's story, and we tell you guys silly stories from mythology and folklore. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Uh, tonight, we will be bringing you a little Slavic fairy tale, uh, the story of the plentiful tablecloth, the avenging wand, the sash that becomes a lake, and the terrible helmet. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I just had to make sure that was all. Yep. It, was just, it just keeps going. It's a long one. And let me tell you a little <laughs> story here. <laughs> What's it called, Grandpa? The story of the plentiful tablecloth. Oh, that sounds like that, that. The avenging wand. <laughs> oh, oh that the sounds... sash that becomes a lake. <laughs> and the terrible helmet. Just absolutely horrible helmet. Just the worst story <laughs> that you can. <laughs> yeah. I uh, chose the longest name I could yeah, find. It's a very it silly fun. name. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a fun one, hopefully. Uh-huh. Maybe. Uh, judging by the name, it sounds like it'll be funny. So, <laughs> there's that to go on. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Love your optimism there, Kim. Kind of jokes you got today. Love your optimism. Okie doke. Okie doke, yeah. Without further ado, Kimbo, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. So, it once so happens that one of the king's herdsmen had three sons. Two of these lads were supposed to be very sharp-witted, while the youngest was thought to be very stupid indeed. The elder sons helped their father to look after the flocks and herds, while the fool, so they called him, was good for nothing but sleeping and amusing himself (laughs) with his hand. Ew. (laughs) It was all he could do was sleep and jerk off. He was kind of a a pain in the ass. (laughs) He would pass his whole days and nights slumbering peacefully on the stove, only getting off when forced to by others, or when he was too warm and wished to lie on the other side, or when he indeed needed to eat. (laughs) Sometimes you gotta eat. His father had no love for him and called him a damn fool. You damn fool! His brothers often tormented him by dragging him off the stove and taking away his food. Indeed, he would many a times have gone hungry if his m- not for his mother uh, had been good to him and fed him on the quiet. <laughs> on the quiet? <laughs> <laughs> on the DL, man. On the DL. Slipping him some ham sandwiches and Gatorade. She caressed him fondly. <laughs> 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 for should he suffer, she thought. Uh, sh- uh Fuck. For why should he suffer, she thought, if he does happen to have been born a fool? Besides, who can understand the way of the gods? It sometimes happens that the wisest men are not happy, while the foolish, when harmless and gentle, lead contented lives. Sitting there and musing himself with his hands. He's he's happy, (laughs) isn't he? One day, on their return from the fields, the <laughs> fool's two brothers dragged him off the stove and taking him into the yard. When they gave him a sound thrashing, they turned him um, out of the house, saying, Go, fool, and lose no time, for you shall not have neither food or like lodging until you bring us like a basket of mushrooms from the woods, bro. The poor lad was so taken by surprise, he hardly understood <laughs> what his brothers wanted him to do. After pondering for a while, he made his way towards the small oak forest, where everything seemed to have a strange and marvelous appearance. So strange that he did not recognize the place. As he walked, he came to a small dead, uh, a small dead tree stump, on the top of which he placed his hat, saying, <laughs> Every tree here raises its head to the sky and wears a good cap of lace. But you, my poor friend, are fire. You'll die cold. <laughs> you must be among your brothers, as I'm among mine, a born fool. <laughs> Take my cap, then. And <laughs> he just gave a tree stump his cap. He isn't that smart. <laughs> and throwing his arms around the dead stump he wept and embraced it tenderly (laughs) 
At that moment, an oak which stood near began to walk towards him as if it were alive. The poor fellow was frightened and about to run away, but the oak spoke like a human and said, Oh, hey there, buddy. Uh, don't run, you know. Uh, wait, <laughs> a, wait a minute and listen here. <laughs> it's a uh, withered tree there. It's, uh, that's my son over there. And up to uh, this time, no one has grief for this dead youth, you know, but me. No one but me. <laughs> you have now watered him with your tears, and uh, in return for your sympathy, you shall henceforth uh, have anything you ask for of me. Uh, be wary, though, I am a tree, so I can't do a whole lot there. i give you some leaves, maybe shake up some uh, some birds. Uh, just, just gotta <laughs> say these words, you know, uh, oh, oak tree, so green, and, uh, with the acorns of gold and whatnot, your, uh, friendship to prove I will try, uh, in heaven's good name, now I beg to, uh, yeah, I'll make, make bold my needs, then I'll, I'll kindly supply there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you, you gave an oak tree a Canadian accent yep, instead I'm of a, a Canadian maple. Oak. Yeah. It's not a maple, man. I'm a Canadian oak. <laughs> a <At> Wisconsin oak. <laughs> At the same moment, a shower of golden acorns fell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me give you a little quick golden shower there, buddy. <laughs> the fool filled his pockets, thanked the oak, and bowed to her, bowing to her, returned home. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, there. I bet you didn't expect there was a lady underneath all this bark, did you, huh? I figure it's like the dwarves, you know. <laughs> you can't really tell them apart. Yeah, every oak tree sounds like a man from uh, Wisconsin. Well, the ladies grow beards, too, right? Yeah. The ladies eat cheese just like the men up there in Wisconsin. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ah, one of his brothers cried out, Bruh, where are the mushrooms? He replied, <laughs> I have some mushrooms off the oak in my pocket. His brother said, Bruh, <laughs> <laughs> eat them yourself then, uh, for you'll like, get nothing else good for nothing. What have you done with your hat anyway, donkey? He replied, <laughs> I put it on a poor stump of a tree that stood by the wayside, for it, it, its head was uncovered, so I thought it looked cold, and I was afraid it might freeze. He then scrambled onto the top of the stove, and as he laid down, some of the golden acorns fell out of his pocket. So bright were they that they shone like sunbeams in the room. In spite of the fool's entries, the brothers picked them up and gave them to their father who hastened to present them to the king, telling him that his idiot son had gathered them in the wood. The king immediately sent a detachment of his guards to the forest to find the oak which bore golden acorns. But their efforts were fruitless, for though they hunted in every nook and corner of the forest, they found not a single oak that bore acorns of gold. At first, the king was very angry, but when he calmed down, he sent for his herdsmen and said to him, was this the king telling the herdsman or the herdsman telling This is the king's herdsman. Oh, I see. Tell your son, the fool, that he must bring me by this evening a cask. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, sorry. A cask filled <laughs> to the brim with these precious golden acorns. If he obeys my commands, you shall never lack bread and salt. And you may rest assured that my royal favor will not fail you in time of need. The herdsman gave his young, youngest son the king's message, and the fool said, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the king uh, is fond of a good bargain, huh? He doesn't ask, he commands, and insists upon the fool fetching him to acorns. A solid gold in return for promises made of air? <laughs> That's what I say. I'm going <laughs> to poop in my hand and rub it on the wall. And neither prayers nor threats of were of the slightest avail to make him change his mind. At last, his brothers pulled him forcefully off the stove, put his coat on him and a new cap, and dragged him into the yard where they gave him a good beating and drove him away, saying, <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're stupid. There's no time to lose. Like, be off and be quick, bruh. If you return without the golden acorns, uh, like, 
we won't let you sleep or eat food. Bring back some more boomers, too. What was the poor fellow to do? For a long time he wept and then crossed himself. And then crossing himself, he went in the direction of the forest. He soon reached the dead stump, which his cap still rested, and going up to the mother oak, uh, said to her, <laughs> uh, Oak tree, you so green with the acorns of gold in my helplessness, I to thee cry in he- heaven, heaven's great, great name to beg. I make bold. My, my presence, pray, pray need satisfied, but I need to pray satisfied. The oak moved and shook its branches, but instead of golden acorns, a tablecloth fell into the fool's <laughs> hands, and the tree said, Oh, hey there, buddy. <laughs> uh, just uh, keep this cloth in your possession and whatnot and what for, uh, you know, for your own use and whatnot and how for or whatever, whenever you want to benefit by it. Uh you need only say, uh, oh, tablecloth, uh, for who, the poor, the hungry, uh, thirsty, you know, those guys all make cheer. Uh, may he who begs from door to door, uh, feed off you without a stint of fear, you know? When he had uttered <laughs> these words, the oak ceased to speak, and the fool, thanking her, bowed and turned towards home. <laughs> On his way, he wondered to himself how he should tell his brothers. And what they would say. But above all, he thought how his good mother would rejoice to see a feast-giving tablecloth. When he had walked about half the distance, he met an old beggar who said to him, (laughs) See what a sick and ragged old man I am, for the love of the gods. Give a little money for some bread. The fool spread his tablecloth on the grass and invited the beggar to sit down and said, Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, tablecloth for the poor, something, the something about hungry and thirsty, uh, make cheer, begging from door to door, and uh, feed off you without a fear stint. <laughs> then a whistling was heard in the air, and overheard something shown, overhead something shone brightly. At the same instant, a table spread as. Uh, spread as for a royal banquet appeared before them. <laughs> oh, well, you got all kinds of different cheeses up there. You know, you got your monster over there. Everybody likes a good monster. I got some blue cheese over there, some gorgonzola. No Parmesan. Got some Parmesan cheese in little packets. Got some Swiss. Some Swiss cheese over yes. there. You know, I got some string cheese. <laughs> some string cheese. <laughs> Got some good cheddar, some smoked cheddar, Gouda. You got you, you guys like Gouda? You already mentioned Gouda. Oh, we got Gouda too. We got Gruyere. Gruyere as well. <laughs> we got all the different cheese. <laughs> the voice of the tree echoed through the heavens. Yeah. <laughs> and over here you have your hams. Upon it were many different kinds of foods, flasks of mead and glasses of the choicest wines. The plates were of solid gold and silver. The fool and the beggar man crossed themselves and began to feast. When they had finished, the whistling was again heard and everything vanished. The fool folded up his tablecloth and went on his way, but the old man said, If you will give me your tablecloth, you shall have this wand in exchange. When you say certain words to it, it'll set upon the person the person's pointed out. Give them such a thrashing that you won't have to get rid of it. That to get rid of it, they'll have to give you anything they possess. The fool thought of his brothers and exchanged the tablecloth for the wand, after which they both went on their respective ways. Suddenly, the fool remembered that the oak had ordered him to keep the tablecloth for his own use, and that by parting with it, he had lost the power of giving his mother an agreeable surprise. So he said to the wand, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thou self-propelling, ever willing, bite and wound, run quick and bring him, bring bring my feast providing tablecloth back to my hand. To thy praise I'll sing. What a dick move! <laughs> and the wand went off like an arrow after the old man. Quickly overtook him, throwing itself upon him, <laughs> beginning to <laughs> beat him dreadfully. The wand cried out in a loud voice. <laughs> Mm, for all this good, you seem to have a liking 
stop the for sure your back out keep on striking. The poor beggar tried to run away, but it was of no use. Take that, bitch. For the wand followed him, striking all the time and repeating the same words over and over again. Get up, bitch. Get up. So in spite of his anxiety to keep the tablecloth, he was forced to throw it away and flee. <laughs> the wand brought the tablecloth back to the fool, who again went on his way towards home, <laughs> thinking of the surprise in store for his mother and brothers. He had not gone very far when a traveler carrying an empty <laughs> wallet accosted him, saying, For the love of the gods, give me a small coin or a morsel of food, for my bag is empty and I am very hungry. I have a long journey ahead of me. The fool spread his tablecloth across the grass and said, <laughs> O tablecloth, who for the poor, hungry, thirsty make cheer, may he who begs from door to door feed off you without fear. Boom, no stints. <laughs> <laughs> a whistling was heard in the air. Something shone brightly over her head. Sorry, overheard. I get that. Sorry. Overheard. <laughs> Overhead. Overheard. And, and a table, spread as if for a royal feast, placed itself before them. It had laid with a numerous variety of dishes. Hydromel and costly wines... The fool and his guests sat down, crossed themselves, and ate their hearts content. <laughs> when they had finished, a whistling was again heard, and everything vanished. The fool folded up the tablecloth carefully, and it was about to continue on his journey when the traveler said, Will you exchange your tablecloth for my waistband? When you say certain words, it turns into a deep lake, upon which you may float at will. <laughs> the words run thus. Oh, marvelous, wonderful, lake-forming band. For my safety and not for my fun, bear me a boat on thy waves far from land, so that I from my foes need not run. I like all the rhyming. There's a lot of rhyming. <laughs> There's a lot of rhyming. <laughs> the fool thought his father would find it very convenient always to have water at hand for the king's flocks. So he gave his tablecloth in exchange for the belt which he wound uh, around his loins. <laughs> and taking the wand in his hands, they went off in opposite directions. After a while, the fool began to reflect on the oak had told him to keep about keeping the tablecloth for his you own dick. use. You total dick. And he remembered, too, that he was depriving himself of the power, yeah, giving I his mother... It away. Well, get back the belt, you fool. I know, right? Uh, depriving his mother of a pleasant surprise. Thereupon he said to the magic words to the wand, <laughs> In the, the self-propelling, ever-willing, fighting wand, run quick and bring my feast-providing tablecloth back to my hand. That praise I will sing. <laughs> and the wand at once started in pursuit of the poor traveler, whom it began to beat, and at the same time crying out loud, Yeah, take that motherfucker. See if you like it. Yeah, yeah take it, bitch. For others, good, you seem to have a licking. Stop, thief, or uh, <laughs> oh, show sure your back, I'll keep on stricking. <laughs> the man was scared out of his wits and tried <laughs> to escape the wand's blows. <laughs> it's got this look in its eyes, and it just wouldn't stop. But it was of no hey, use, hey. so he was forced to throw the tablecloth away and I run at the legs. top of his speed. The wand brought the tablecloth back to his master, and the latter hid it under his coat. Rearranging <laughs> the waistband <laughs> and taking the faithful wand in his hands, again went towards home. No harm, no fail. <laughs> As he walked, he rejoiced to think of the pleasures uh, <laughs> that he would should have in exchange exercising the wand on his wicked brothers or his father's satisfaction when by the help of his waistbands he could always have water for the king's flock even the driest weather and his mother his mother's joy of witnessing the wonders of the feast giving tablecloth these pleasant thoughts were interrupted by a soldier lame clothed in rags and covered with wounds um, he had once um, been a famous warrior he said to the fool I am pursued by misfortunes. I was once a brave soldier and fought valiantly in my youth. Now I took an arrow to the knee, and <laughs> my days of adventuring are over. 
<laughs> and on this lonely road, I have found no one to give me a morsel of food. Please have pity on me and give me a little bread. So when did you retire? <laughs> <laughs> the fool sat down on the grass and spreading his tablecloth said, <laughs> Tablecloth, poor, hungry, thirsty, cheer, stint, fear, from door to door, boom. <laughs> <laughs> the whistling was heard in the air. Something bright shone overhead, and then before them stood the table spread as for a royal feast, loaded with dainty dishes, mead, and costly wines. When they had eaten and drank as much as they wanted, the whistling was again heard, and then everything vanished. I'm beginning to feel like he's going to look like a fucking pig, like, getting home. Like, how does he eat this much food? He doesn't make it very far. I know. He just keeps, uh, I'm a fool. I can eat a lot. I think so. I take lots of poop. I make poop. Just sitting there pooping while he's eating. (laughs) Mm, Got to deal with that already. (laughs) Uh, My Uh, diabetes fool. A whistling was heard in the air. Oh, we talked about this. When they had eaten and drank. And drank and eaten. They had a whistle. And everything vanished. Okay, cool. The fool was folding. <laughs> yeah, you know the story. I can't remember where we were. The fool was folding up his tablecloth when the soldier said, Oh, will you give me your tablecloth in exchange for this six sword helmet? It will fire itself off and instantly destroy the object pointed out. You have to but turn it around on your head and repeat these words. Oh, magic helmet, never thou dost want for power nor shot. Alive, my fears, and fire now, just where I point. Fail not. You will see that it fires off immediately, and even if your enemy were a mile away, he would fall. The fool was delighted with the idea, and thought Mm -hmm. how useful such a hat would be in any sudden danger. It would even serve to defend his country, the king, or himself. So he handed the tablecloth to the soldier, put the helmet on his head, took his wand in hand, and again set his face towards home. When he had gone some distance and the soldier was almost out of sight, he began Uh to think of what the oak had said about not parting with the tablecloth and of how his dear mother could could now not (laughs) enjoy the pleasant surprise that he had been dreaming (laughs) about, daydreaming about. So he had said to the wand, He's such a fool. <laughs> such a dick. I know, he just keeps forgetting. Oh, I was supposed to give that to my mom. Okay, well, I guess I'll, I'll just have my wand go beat that guy. <laughs> wand, <laughs> wand, go kick some ass. The wand dashed after the soldier. Okay. <laughs> and having reached him, began to beat him, crying out. Mm, take that, bitch. Take that. Just take it. Right to your face. Mm. Your knees. Mm. The soldier was still a powerful man. And in spite of his wounds, turned right, turned right about, turned right about and faced. Intending to give a blow for blow. But the wand was too much for him. And he soon found <laughs> resistance useless. Get your sissy ass over here. Why are not five, five pieces of shit bigger than you and now? So overcome by the pain rather than fear, he threw away the Pow, tablecloth and took to his heels. Pow, the, ball shot. the faithful Juan brought the tablecloth back to his master, who, glad to have it again, once more turned towards home. He soon left the forest, crossed the fields, and came in sight of his father's house. At a little distance therefrom, his brothers met him and said crossly, Aha! Bruh. Well, where were you, stupid? Where's all the fucking acorns, bruh? The fool looked at them <laughs> and laughed in their faces. Yeah, I like to imagine he's got two brothers. He does. And one of them only says, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> then he said to his wand, <laughs> Wow, get, your, get out here and get some, get some blood. The wand needed no second bite bidding and darted out of his hand and began to thrash his brother soundly, mm, crying take out it, take it, bitch. like a reasoning creature. I got 
got you. Put up your dukes. <laughs> the brothers were overpowered and felt all the while as if boiling water were being poured over yeah, their heads. You like that? Yelling with pain, they began to run at full speed and soon disappeared with clouds of dust flying around them. The wand then came back to the fool's hand and went into the house, climbed onto the stove, and told his mother all that had happened. Then he cried, <laughs> Tablecloth, who the poor, the poor for the hungry and the thirsty, cheer, cheer and make us let with our cottage door. Feed off you without a stint of fear. A whistling was heard in the <laughs> air, and something bright shone overhead. And then a tablecloth laid as if a royal bank was placed before them, covered with dainty meats, glasses, and bottles of meads and wine. The whole surface was of gold and silver, and as the fool and his mother were about to begin the feast, the herdsman entered. He stopped, dumb with amazement, but then, when invited to partake, he began to eat and drink with great enjoyment. At the end of the meal, the whistling was again heard, and everything vanished completely. The herdsman set off in hot haste to the court to tell the king of the new marvels, or the new marvel, sorry. He only saw the tablecloth. Thereupon, his majesty sent one of his heroes in search of the fool, whom he found stretched out on the stove. The paladin <laughs> said, Aye, if you value your life and listen and obey to the king's orders, he commands you to send him by me your tablecloth. Then you shall have your share of his royal favor. But if not you, we'll always remain a poor fool. <laughs> I emphasize my sentences a little weird sometimes. And will moreover be treated as a refractory prisoner. We teach them how to behave, you understand. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> the fool said to him. <laughs> oh yeah, I get it. And then he pronounced the magic words. I made a poopy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, self-propellant, ever wheeling, fighting wand. Go soundly and thrash that man, the most deceiving, dangerous wretch in all the land. Go hurt him all you can. Boom. That's some rhyming. Kicking out some rhyming. Spitting hot bars. The wand sprang from the fool's hand with the speed of lightning and <laughs> struck the paladin three times in the face. He immediately fled, but the wand was after him, hitting him all the time and crying out, Ha <laughs> ha! Mere promises are not children's play, so do not throw your breath away. But think of something true to say, you rogue, when next you come our way. Also, take that! Boom! Right in the brown eye! <laughs> brown eye. Boom! Wow. Right in the eye. Now you got pink eye too, bitch. <laughs> wow. I'm a ruthless wand. I defected. Don't take no shit off nobody. <laughs> er, not defected. Defeated and filled with concentration. <laughs> and pink eye. <laughs> Consternation. <laughs> Defeated and filled with conjunctivitis. He was on his way. <laughs> the paladin returned to the king and told him about the wand and how badly he had been beaten. The king's like, oh, dude, ooh, dude get out <laughs> of here. Wash your hands. <laughs> when the king heard that the fool possessed a wand that struck of itself, he wanted it so much that for a time he forgot all about the tablecloth and sent some of his soldiers with the orders to bring him back the wand. When they entered the cottage, the fool, as usual, was lying on the stove. They said to the fool, Here, <laughs> deliver us the wand this instant. The king is willing to pay ye any price, <laughs> you ask. But if ye refuse, he will take it from ye by force. If we are, we ain't the pirate paladins. Instead of replying, <laughs> the fool unwound his waistband, saying <laughs> to it as he did so. Oh, 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 marvelous, wonderful, like farming band, for my safety and not for my fun. Bear me in a boat on thy waves far from land, so that I from my foes need not run. <laughs> I always wanted to be Rose instead of Leonardo. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Titanic. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> I made a poop. Nice. I want to run the lake. <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> 
Sorry. There is a shimmering in the air, while at the same moment everything around them disappeared, and a beautiful lake along wide and deep was seen, surrounded by green fields. Fish with golden scales and eyes of pearls played in the clear water, and in the center, in the small silver skiff, rode a man whom the soldiers recognized as the fool. <laughs> Look at me, I'm on a boat! They remained some time looking at this miracle, and then ran off to tell the king. Now, when the king heard of thereof, and he was <laughs> so anxious to possess the lake, or rather the waistband that produced the lake, and he sent a whole battalion of soldiers to take the fool by pri- fool prisoner. This time they managed to get hold of him while he was asleep, but as they were about to tie his hands, he turned round to his hat and said... I made a poop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Instantly. magic helmet. <laughs> Never dust it, thou dost it for power, nor shot. Gee, just fucking fly off, helmet. Instantly, a hundred bullets whistled through the air, aimed <laughs> clouds of smoke and loud reports. I didn't know it was a machine gun. <laughs> Many of the soldiers uh, fell dead, and others took refuge in the woods. Once they returned to the king to give an account of what had taken place. He's got a 50 cow! (laughs) Whereupon the king flew into a violent rage, furious that he had yet failed to take the fool. But his wish to possess the feast-giving tablecloth, the magic wand, the lake-forming stash, and above all, the helmet with the 24 horns. Even though he had six earlier. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got more horns. It's also got a 50 cal machine gun <laughs> mounted to the top. It was stronger than ever. <laughs> Having reflected for some days on the best ways and means to attain his object, he resolved to try the effect of kindness and sent for the fool's mother. His majesty said to the woman, Tell your son that he may bang my daughter. And I send greetings, and uh, we should we should consider it an honor if he'd come here and uh, show us the marvelous things he possesses. Should he feel inclined to make me a present of them, I will give him half of my kingdom and make him my heir. You may also say that the princess, my daughter, will choose him for her husband, because I don't give her a choice. <laughs> <laughs> The good woman hastened home to her son, whom she advised to accept the king's invitation and show him his treasures. The fool uh, wound the waistband around his loins, put the helmet on his head, hid the tablecloth in his breast, and took his magic wand in hand and started off for the court. (laughs) Blood wand. (laughs) I know, right? Just let me taste some blood, please. The king was not there oh on his king. arrival, but he was received by the paladin. <laughs> what the fuck did the king do? I have been waiting years for this man to show up. Who's Time for me to go to Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> Who saluted him courteously. I can't have a margarita if I'm not on the beach. <laughs> Music played and the troops did him military honors. In fact, he was treated far better than he had expected. On being presented to the king, he took off his helmet and bowed low, saying, <laughs> Oh, king, I have come to lay at the foot of your throne my tablecloth, waistband, wand, and helmet. In return for these gifts, I just beg that your favor may be shown to the most humble of your subjects. <laughs> also, I brought you a poop. The king said, I also have a poop for you. (laughs) We're not too different, are we? (laughs) I'm just a fool with a (laughs) crown. Tell me then, fool, what price do you want for these goods? The fool says, (laughs) No money, sire. A fool fool like me cares little about money. He's not the king's promise. (laughs) Has not the king promised my mother that he'll give me in exchange for half of his kingdom and the hand of his daughter and all that stuff, I really wouldn't beg your daughter. <laughs> After these words, the paladin was filled with envy at the good fortune of the fool and made a sign for the guards to enter. The soldiers seized the poor fellow, dragged him out of the courtyard, and they killed him treacherously, 
to the sound of drums and trumpets. <laughs> After which they covered him over with earth. Jesus. Now it happened when the soldiers stabbed him, his blood spurted out, and some of the drops <laughs> fell beneath the princess's window. The maiden Ew. whipped bitterly at the sight, watering the blood-stained ground with her tears. And lo, marvelous to relate, the apple tree grew out of the blood-sprinkled <laughs> earth, and it grew so rapidly that its branches soon touched the windows of her room. By noon it was covered with blossoms, and while at evening... Even tied, ripe red apples hung thereon. As the princess was admiring them, she noticed that one of the apples trembled when she touched it. It fell into the bosom of her dress, and it took her fancy. <laughs> I'm in love with this apple, and I don't care what anyone thinks. And she held it in her hands. <laughs> Meanwhile, the sun had set, night had fallen, and everyone in the palace was asleep except the guard the paladin, and the princess. The guard, sword in hand, patrolled up and down, for it was his duty. The princess toyed with her pretty little apple and could not sleep, and the paladin, who had gone to bed, was aroused by the sound that made his blood run cold. For the avenging wand stood before him and began to beat him soundly, and although he rushed from his room trying to escape it, it followed him, crying out, Fuck you! Take that, you little bitch! Take that! <laughs> I'm going to give you pink eye and your other eye, too. Why'd you <laughs> act so unjustly? You can both be both just and honest be. For others, God's goods. Why have you such a liking? <laughs> you rogue, you thief, be sure I'll keep on striking. The unhappy man wept and cried for mercy, but the wand still continued to strike. <laughs> it squashed one of my balls. The princess was distressed on hearing these cries of distress, and she watered her much cherished apple with her tears. <laughs> and strange to tell, the apple grew and changed its shape. Thus continuing to change, it suddenly turned into a handsome young man, even the very same who had been killed that morning. The fool says, <laughs> Lovely princess, I salute you. The cunning of the paladin caused my death. But with your tears, you've restored me to life. Your proud, your father promised to give you to me. Are you willing? The princess replied, Oh, silly, consent isn't a thing. As she gave him her hand with a tender look. <laughs> it's 1080 AD. I mean, it hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> he spoke and the door opened. <laughs> Ad admitting the helmet, which placed itself upon his head. Hip, hip, hip. The sash, which wound itself around his waist, and the tablecloth, which hid itself in one of his pockets, and the avenging wand, which placed itself in his hand. Uh, then came the king, all out of breath and wondering what the noise was about. He was amazed to see the fool alive again. What is all of this ruckus? And even more so that he should be with the princess. The young fellow, fearing the king's wrath, cried out, Oh, marvelous, wonderful, like forming band for my safety, but also a little bit for fun. Put us in a boat, like far from land, maybe like a speedboat or something cool. Like, oh, how about a jet ski? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> there was a shimmering in the air, and then everything disappeared. <laughs> While on the lawn before the palace stretched a wide, deep lake, and the crystal clear water of which swam little fish with eyes of pearls and scales of gold. Far away rode the princess and the fool in a silver skiff. Mm -hmm. Silver sea dew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the king stood on the shores of the lake and si uh, signed God to damn, them to return. That looks so fun. <laughs> when they had landed, they kneeled at his feet and avowed their mutual love, Perfect upon peace. which his majesty <laughs> bestowed his blessings the lake disappeared, and they again found themselves in the princess's apartment. The king called a special meeting of his council, at which he explained how things had turned out, that he had made the fool his heir and betrothed him to his daughter, and had put the paladin in prison. The fool gave the king his magic treasures and told him uh, what words to say in each case. The next day... 
All their wishes were fulfilled. <laughs> I just imagine the king just tearing it up on a sea dew out on the water. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got my jet ski. She looks so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little bit like fucking the Sultan in Aladdin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wee. Wee. <laughs> Next day, all their wishes were fulfilled. The fool of the family was married to the princess and at that same time received half the kingdom with the promise of succession to the throne. And the wedding feast to which all the rich and noble of the lands were invited, exceeding its magnificent and splendor any other festival ever seen or heard of. Sadly, ten years after he took over, the kingdom fell into complete ruin because, you know, he's the fool. <laughs> Things happen. <laughs> Things happen. I gave half of my country to another country. <laughs> <laughs> that also happens, right? Like, Louisiana Purchase. <laughs> yeah. It was just a logic. I mean, transfer. just imagining the fool's logic, though, the way it works. I gave all of our food to our neighboring country. You can't do that. We need to eat. Oh, that's right. Oh, uh, okay. Let's go massacre them and get our food back. <laughs> <laughs> and the fool's actual name was Igor the Bloodthirsty. <laughs> Fuck. Not Ivor the Boneless. Yeah, with his wand sphincter ripper. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, folks, that was uh, that was a Slavic fairy tale for you. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that one actually, uh, the cool thing about that was that that one actually came from the Slavic... Uh, herdsmen. Herdsmen. A lot actually, of herdsmen yeah, get together on the hill, drink bill. <laughs> beer and talk beer. about stuff. <laughs> you remember that one time? Oh, I remember that, Bill. <laughs> I heard it was to do with the fucking, the sash of the lake. The leg no, sash. It was the avenging wand, bro. Now he had no, a no, helmet no, no, no. with a He's machine a gun on top of it. No, no, no. He's got a tablecloth. No, he had a wand that would beat the shit out of no, people. No, no, no. He had this. No, no, no. And then they were like, no, let's just combine it all. <laughs> let's combine it all. It all Fuck sounds it, throw fucking it an good. oak tree from Canada, Wisconsin. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh hope you folks had fun. Hope, hope you enjoyed it. Is fairy tales. Oh, yeah, the fairy tales. And the herdsman. And the herdsman. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> we heard it from the herdsman. <laughs> da -dum -da. Da -dum -da. Yeah. So yeah. Don't forget to check us out. Yeah. Uh be sure to like, subscribe, follow, share. Yeah. Shout out our name from rooftops. Just During yell it yell it at yell it at a move out of a moving car at strangers during business hours <laughs> during business hours <laughs> it's always business here baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah uh we will be back next week what are we doing next week we doing more slavic fairy tale yeah i think we got one more we got one more silly slavic fairy tale for you Let's see if you can uh, remember where this week. one came yeah. from <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I uh, hope you folks enjoyed it and we will see you next week. Yep. Bye. Bye. Hi.